Welcome to another video from Cloud on Out. My name is Andreas and this video is all about running containers on ARM processors. A few months ago, I bought a new MacBook Pro, which is powered by Apple Silicon, an ARM processor. Never before have I worked with a more powerful machine. And AWS as well announced their ARM processors called Graviton back in 2018. And they made some huge progress since then. So we have Graviton 2. A few days ago, they announced Graviton 3, their latest architecture. And they are rolling that out to many of their services. And that means as a customer, we can choose if we want to run our workloads on AMD, Intel, or ARM processors nowadays. And the benefit of Graviton 2 is um, you, you get the same performance at lower costs, basically. That's why I choose it for a lot of my workloads. But when it comes to containers, things get a little tricky because a container image built for AMD Intel does not run on ARM processors out of the box. Instead, you need to build a separate image for that. And within the next 15 minutes, you will learn how to build a multi-architecture container image that works on ARM processors, Apple Silicon or Graviton, and also on AMD Intel processors. We do that locally on a local machine and we use code build to integrate it into a CI CD pipeline as well. Before we start, I do have a question for you. Are you looking for a new job? Let me introduce open positions from our sponsors. TechRacer, a premier AWS consulting partner, is looking for a cloud consultant joining them at one of their sites in Duisburg, Frankfurt, Hamburg, Hanover, Munich, Vienna, Lisbon and Lucerne. It is important to mention that AWS is all, all in on AWS, which means you will work on AWS-related projects focusing on cloud infrastructure like VPC, EC2, RDS, and also modern architectures based on containers or even serverless applications. TechRacer even covers topics like analytics and machine learning. Also, TechRacer is looking for a cloud migration specialist. So did you plan and execute a migration of an on-premise workload to AWS already? TechRacer is looking for specialists accelerating the journeys of their SMB and enterprise clients in Germany and Europe. Interested in that? Uh, check out the links in the video description. First, I will show you how to create a multi-architecture image for AMD Intel as well as ARM processors on your local machine. And um, that's quite a lot to do because we need to build two different images, create a manifest file that bundles things together and then push everything to a registry. Luckily, there's a shortcut for all of that, which I will use in my example. Okay, so let's switch to my terminal. The first thing uh, is I need to create a repository that I can push all those images to, and I will use ECR for that. So AWS ECR create repository, and we need to specify a repository name, and I will use Node.js Express for that because the example I use is a Node.js Express application. Okay, fine. So here it is. Next, we need to make sure that we are um, logging in uh, for that repository. So this is AWS ECR, get a login password, and then we pipe that to Docker login with username AWS, the password from standard in. And now I need to copy the first part of this uh, URL here. Okay, so that should do the trick. Okay, login succeeded, fine. So next, I promised you a shortcut. And the shortcut is called buildx, which is basically a part of Docker that allows you to create multi-architecture images very easily. And when you use it for the first time, you need to create a build instance. And uh, you do so by simply typing docker buildx create, and then the use parameter to make sure you're using that instance right away. Okay, here it is. So next, we are building the images. Um, to do so, we use docker build x, and then the build command looks very similar to docker build, which you normally use for building an image. The difference is 
Um, that this allows us to specify the platforms that we want to build for. And in this example, I'm using two, which is AMD64 and ARM64, so which builds for Intel AMD and ARM processors. Also, buildX is a little different because the build command allows you to push the images to your registry right away. The, the advantage of that is they are not flowing around on your local machine and you have to push them um, one by one. It just bonds everything together, uh, uploads everything at once. That's very convenient. Uh, so I highly recommend doing so. So that's the push parameter. And then uh, we need to tag our images. And to do so, I'm copying the um, repository that we created before. And um, the only thing that's left is what you're probably already familiar when building Docker images is I'm now re referencing the Docker file um, to build my image. So the Docker file is just the instructions to build the Docker image. Um, you're already probably already aware of that when uh, working with uh, Docker. So this is just uh, to show you there's a Docker file here that copies files, runs NPM and stuff like that for the Node.js uh, application. Okay, so um, back to the terminal. Um, let's execute docker build x build. So this is now building the two different images. And this runs in parallel, so it builds ARM and AMD uh, images in parallel, which is quite cool. And at the end, it will create the manifest and then push everything to my repository. Okay, so Docker Build X created the multi-architecture images and pushed them to ECR for me. And now I can basically run a, um, a container out of that image. Um, so let's quickly copy that from here. And uh, so this runs now on my macOS machine with silicon uh, ARM processor. It would run on an Intel machine as well because we have built it for those two platforms. And when I do Docker run, um, Docker will fetch the right version from the repository automatically. So that's quite cool. Second, I want to show you how to build multi-architecture container images with code build. So the code build is a service that can use standalone or as part of a code pipeline, for example, to build your CI CD pipeline. Let's quickly jump into the code. So, first of all, when using code build, you configure a project, which basically configures the build project that you're using. And um, the important part here is I'm using a predefined environment that code build comes with, which is code build standard 5.0. Okay. I'm also using the privilege mode too, because that's required to build Docker images inside the Docker container that runs on code build. Okay, so that's one part of the story. The other one is uh, code build uses a file called buildspec.yaml, and this is where basically the magic happens. So let's have a look at that. Um, the build spec uh, file uh, starts with or contains different phases, and in the install phase, which basically runs before building anything, I'm making sure that Docker is ready. And the thing here is, uh, which is um, uh, important to know, is that the Docker version that CodeBuild ships does not come with BuildX, which is basically a plugin included. So we need to add that manually. So this is basically um, the four lines here, which we fetch at the BuildX um, plugin. We create a CLI plugin folder, add the thing to the folder and change um, the execution privileges for that. Um, so that is important because otherwise build X is not available inside code build. Okay. And then the additional step here is um, by default also code build does not come um, with environments to build ARM64 and AMD um, images. And there is a way to do install or basically prepare those environments uh, on the machine um, with this command, which basically does all that, um, which is quite cool. And uh, remember, I've created a blog post with all the commands and code snippets, so you file, find a link to that in the show notes. So check that out. You don't have to copy it from the screen here. Okay, so after that, um, we're logging into ECR and stuff that is not uh, too important anymore. Um, to build the actually Docker images, I'm calling a, a 
uh, shell script here and this is what we should have a look next. So what is in here is what you're already familiar with because it's docker build x create which we run locally as well and then the docker build x build command which is also uh, the same that we have been using locally so that uh, stays the same. And as part of the pipeline I'm also using CloudFormation now to package and deploy everything but I think that is out of scope of this video. I'm just wanting to show you how to use docker build x inside the pipeline. So I have created multi-architecture container images two different ways, locally on my machine and then with code build as part of a CI CD pipeline. What I want to show you next is how to deploy that image to AWS and how to deploy it on Intel and how to deploy it with Graviton 2, which is an ARM-based processor. So let's take a look in that configuration. First of all, uh, let's jump to the AWS management console. So here is the ECS cluster, um, which basically um, runs one service that spins up two different tasks. And the tasks um, that are running, the question is, are they running on Intel or are they running on Graviton 2 uh, processors? And as far as I can tell, there is no way to get that information from the management console. That is why we jump to the CLI next. So here let's do AWS ECS describe tasks. Then we need to specify the task ID as well as the cluster. Quickly copy the cluster ID because it's quite long. Okay. And what we get back is really detailed information about the uh, tasks that are running, the container that are running. And uh, what we find here is this information, which is important. So this runs on the CPU architecture x86-64, which is Intel AMD. So now, for now, our Fargate tasks um, are not running on ARM processors yet. So let's change that. What I need to do is I need to change the ECS task definition. The task definition is basically the blueprint that ECS uses to spin up new containers. And um, let's look at that. So I'm using a CloudFormation module for that. It is very similar if you use uh, CloudFormation, plain CloudFormation or any other tool or even a console. Um, so for now, the CPU architecture that is defined here is x86-64 uh, and I will change that to ARM64. So that's basically all I need to do. And um, now I will quickly commit that change. So I'm quickly committing that change uh, to the Git repository that triggers the pipeline. Okay, so now it will take a while and it will uh, deploy the new version, which will switch from the Intel AMD to Graviton 2. Okay, the change is running on AWS, so I am again um, copying a task ID of a running task. And we will look into the details by using the uh, CLI again, AWS ECS describe tasks, I'm specifying the task ID, also the cluster, let me quickly copy the cluster name again because it is so long. And um, what we will find in here now, hopefully if everything worked, yes it did, we find here that this container is now running on ARM, so it runs on Graviton. So we deployed um, the same, we used the same multi-architecture container image to deploy uh, our service on ECS, um, once with AMD Intel and once uh, with ARM processors. So that proves that the same image basically can be used for uh, those two different architectures, which is cool. In this video, I've used examples from our book, Rapid Docker on AWS. Our book guides you through containerizing a PHP or Ruby or Java or Node.js application and how to deploy everything in a production-ready infrastructure with load balancing, auto-scaling, a relational database, monitoring, and many more. So if you're interested in that, check out the video descriptions for a link. Did you learn something new by watching this video? Remember, our work on Cloud on Out is only possible because of your support. If you not already doing so, please consider supporting us with a one-time or recurring donation as well. You will find all the details in the video description. Also, don't forget to check out our blog, 
newsletter and podcast. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Bye.